brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. It's sippin' time. Yes, it's sippin' time again. Uh, hello and welcome to this Sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. As always, we are the best thing on at 2 a.m. This is a one-hour show that's mildly entertaining for about 22 and a half minutes. I'm going for 25 today, baby. Yeah, you keep dreaming, baby. Uh, we are banned in three countries, one state. Two municipalities, a couple of counties, and at this point, the dog won't even talk to us. Roll Tide. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, now nobody will talk to us. Uh, this is Maid Mad Bob. Joining me today are Maid Man Brent. It's a pleasure to be here, even though I'm not hanging out in the basement. All right. Good old boy, Harmeet. Uh, technically, I'm the only good old boy here. That makes me the host. Yeah, okay. And Maid Man Maury. Good morning. Pleasure to be here, Bob. Thank you for the invite. All right, Brent and Maury and myself, we're with the Bourbon Mafia. The Bourbon Mafia is a nonprofit organization composed of high end bourbon enthusiasts and industry professionals. With representation in seven states, our members combine a love of bourbon and a passion for charitable work. The group uses their love of our native spirit to raise money for local and national charities through rare bottle auctions and other themed events. And drinking. Lots of drinking. Well, you got to have some drinking. There's no point in going on without drinking. Our show is sponsored by The Bourbon Review, a quarterly magazine and online source for all things bourbon. You can find them at www.thebourbonreview.com. And also find Spirits in Cooper City, Florida, home of the Enomatic Machine, serving great wines and whiskeys and other spirits by the glass. You can find them at www.findspirits.net. Thanks for having me again, and uh, I, it's a pleasure sponsoring the show. I want to remind you all that I am a sponsor of the show, being uh, surrounded as I am by Mafia members. Um, what are these cement shoes all about? Just keep your mouth shut. Yeah, don't, don't worry, worry about, about, about it. Don't worry about those. No, Shannon, I love you. <laughs> keep dreaming, buddy. Search the bay. <laughs> we have the Everglades here. That's yeah. you know that's what alligators that's are right. for. Our sip segments are all about wine, distilled, uh, distilled spirits, tea, and coffee. And today's show is a distiller's takeover show featuring products from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. You have music for that? Uh, yeah, actually, I do have music for that. Happy trails to That's sappy music. Well, buffaloes, cowboys, you know. That was, again, that was, Mike's, that was Mike's idea. This one was my idea. Buffalo Springfield. See, Perfect. Maury gets it. Old people get this one, I guess. Yeah. Aged to perfection. Something yeah, because you're you're just a spring do. chicken. I, you guys have got at least five you, years you know, on me, man. Oh, yeah. Five, yeah wow. A whole five years. Good Maybe Lord. five minutes. <laughs> yeah, on a good day. Uh, we'll cover some background on the Buffalo Trace Distillery as well as on the individual products we'll be tasting. Our samples today were graciously provided to us by Amy Presky of the Sazerac Company. Thank you, thank you, Amy. And here is a short list of what we're going to discuss today. But not necessarily in this order. Not necessarily in this order. Buffalo Trace Bourbon, Sazerac Rye, uh, Stag Jr., Eagle Rare, and E.H. Taylor. All right. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's a it, it's a good lineup today, so we can't complain. Um, the history of the distillery can be traced back to 1811, when a three-story stone warehouse was built on the banks of the Kentucky River to store goods, including barrels of whiskey, waiting shipment to places as far away as New Orleans. Uh, they they still make it there too, I guess. There you go. Benjamin Harrison Blanton is said to have distilled at this site in the years following. In 1858, a small distillery was developed and operated by Daniel Swaggart at the site, which was purchased by Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor Jr. and rechristened as the OFC Distillery. OFC standing for Old Fire Copper, 
in reference to the belief that the finest whiskey was produced in old-fashioned wood-fired copper stills. Uh, they still do that, the copper still thing, though, I hope, right? Yeah, well, you know, you can't have a good still without having copper influence. It, you know, that, that's what takes out the sulfuric compound. So even in a column still, they're going to have uh, copper plates. So They're not all wood-fired now, though. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got, they got two or three guys that are you know randomly chopping down trees and throwing in lumber <laughs> as fast as they can. Yeah, no, not not with the not with the quantity of whiskey that they make in a place the size of uh, Buffalo Trace. So, um, Colonel Taylor rebuilt the distillery as a state of the art facility in 1872, and in 1878 the UFC distillery was purchased by George T. Stagg with E.H. Taylor continuing on to oversee operations. Uh, George D. Stagg, another name. Uh, there's, know, some, there's some names here, starting with Blanton. Yeah. You'll have a lot of names with this distillery that, you know, are icons in the industry, um, not just because they have whiskeys named after them, but, you know, people who were, were huge in, in, in the bourbon industry in Kentucky back in the day. Yeah, I, I want to say, Bob, that uh, the impressive thing about uh, Buffalo Trace is the huge number of giants in the industry that are associated with it. Uh, many of the distilleries have a single patriarch or founding father and, and some lineage. But here, in the, back in the day, you've got guys like Stagg, uh, Taylor, um, Blanton, Elmer T. Lee, who comes along. Uh, I just think that you can't underestimate the heritage, um, the... Uh, wealth of knowledge and really the industry giants behind the buffalo trace name and line of products yeah they've, they've got quite a line of 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 you know well-known names associated with the distillery not yeah. just the guy whose name's on the front of the building but you know people who were innovators people who were you know icons of the industry people who you know changed the way that the business was done um a uh, tragedy struck in 1882. The distillery burned down due to a lightning strike, which you know, tends to happen when you have a giant building filled with high-proof alcohol. Or, or need insurance money. That or need insurance too. money. Um, it was again rebuilt as a state-of-the-art facility, many parts of which are still in use today. If you go to a tour of the uh, distillery, you'll see a lot of the buildings definitely date back to, to that era. In fact, the, uh, the one uh, warehouse that's right across from the gift shop still has OFC. Uh, in the legend of, at the top of the uh, the top of the roof, um, Colonel Taylor was an innovator in the industry, installing the first steam heating system for the aging warehouses in 1886. This system is still in use today, and Colonel Taylor was also instrumental in the passage of the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. And we discussed that in uh, some some pretty good detail in our in our bonded uh, episode that we did a few weeks back. Um, very yeah. important act. Very important act. You know, the first real pure, the, the, the first real pure food and drug act ever in, enacted by the United States. It, it predated the Food and Drug Act itself by, I think, five or seven years. Um, you know, protecting not only their brand but also the consumer, uh, the consumer, making sure that they're getting what they're supposed to get. Because at that time, there were a lot of producers who were making horrific combinations of of old and new whiskey and juice out of spatoons and turpentine and God only knows what they were putting in Yeah, there's in it. people who go blind all over the world today from bad whiskey. Yeah, so... Or bad it, vodka. It, uh, you know, that, that, was, that, was, that was a huge step in, in, in the federal law, you know, protecting the consumer. But, you know, it also was a, you know, was a, a shrewd move because it also allowed, you know, them to protect their brand, which, you know, if you spend a lot of time and a lot of money as they did building, you know, building that brand, you want to... You want to definitely protect that. Well, I think it's interesting. It does say something about our society at the time that we were more interested in protecting our whiskey than our food or our cosmetics, of which those acts came later. What do you yeah. mean? What do you mean at, at that time? I'm really only concerned about my whiskey now. <laughs> well, yeah, I pretty, know. I'll pretty much well, eat whatever you put in front of me at this point. I, well, Maury's pretty concerned about his cosmetics, so. Well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I just think that it's a, <laughs> an interesting Simmons, commentary apparently. that the first uh, the first uh, essentially consumer protection act was protecting our whiskey, and everything else came later. God bless America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in 1897, another name everyone will know, Albert Blanton joined the company at the age of 16, the most popular 16-year-old in the state of Kentucky. And uh, his high school. Oh, absolutely. And rose quickly through the ranks to become the stillhouse, warehouse, and bottling superintendent, and eventually the president of the distillery. 
It was during this time in, 18, in 1904 that the distillery again was renamed, this time the George T. Stagg Distillery. In 1919, the 18th Amendment establishing prohibition was ratified, and the Volstead Act was passed. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was passed to uh, to deal with its enforcement. Uh, during this period, most distilleries in the U.S. were closed because, well, you know, if you don't have any place to sell your product, you're not going to stay open very long. However, the George T. Stagg Distillery was one of the few that was able to survive because they were able to receive a permit to bottle medicinal whiskey and even one of the fewer permitted to produce new whiskey after the initial batches of medicinal whiskey ran out. All my whiskey's medicinal. You can ask Maury. He's my doctor. Yeah, that's why yes. we have him I here. prescribe it daily. <laughs> yeah. With the end of Prohibition in 1933, the George T. Stagg Distillery was one of only four distilleries in Kentucky capable of producing whiskey. And later that same year, Shenley began to, a massive expansion program that culminated in 1935 to 1937, with a new state-of-the-art distillery complex, I'm, I'm seeing a pattern here. They, you know, they they work for a while. They they rebuild the distillery and make it, you know, the most state-of-the-art that they can, uh, trying to produce the best product they can. So, um, you know, with the with the icons that they've had involved, if, you know, apparently these guys are doing it correctly. In 1949, Elmer T. Lee joined the distillery, and he's later responsible for the creation of Blanton's the world's first single-barrel bourbon in 1984. Good job. And we'll be back. Rolling clouds and crashing surf Iridescent dunes reflecting By the light of a rising glowing moon Seashore mesmerizing Night breeze hypnotizing We've come across these back roads none too soon Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever, sweet love And we're back. Welcome to our uh, SIPS episode. We're doing the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Uh, we were wrapping up the information on the history of the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Um, we had gotten past... Uh, Elmer the, T. Lee, 1949. Elmer T. Lee, the man who was responsible for coming forward with the first uh, single barrel bourbon, Blanton's, and, you know, when... When he came up with the idea on that, you know, bourbon was not the popular spirit that it is today. You know, it was, uh, you know, it was in the depths of its depression. Um, and here's a man who had the foresight to say, "Hey, I can, I can take a product, I can make a premium product out of it, bottle it as a single barrel version, actually charge more for it." And I think that's going to sell. They and, made a great bourbon named after him too, because of it. And and you know it it worked out. Uh, you know it's still one of the you know the best selling uh, premium bourbons out there. And and as you said, they they named another whiskey after him as well. So um, in 1992, the current owner of uh, Buffalo Trace, Sazerac Company, bought the distillery. And seven years later, after another round of renovations at the distillery, it was again renamed, and this time it was renamed the Buffalo Trace Distillery uh, for the the Buffalo Trace. They're, they're back in the day, in prehistoric times, there was a huge buffalo crossing because we had buffalo here in the United States at the time, and that was one of the areas of the Kentucky River where they used to cross. So that's a little bit of the history of Buffalo Trace. And now we'll have Maury tell you about our SIPs ratings. Quick, Maury, because before they change the name again, it's 2016 now. That's right. There could be another name change and another renovation. Uh, well, as for our SIPs ratings, um, these are the ratings we use on a weekly basis. A num- rating of number one. One sip. One sip. Give me a glass of water to wash out my mouth. Always with the Indian. Yep. A sip two. Nice. But what else do you have, Bob? Well, isn't that nice? A sip three. Hmm. 
Interesting. What was that again? Interesting. We sip four. Let's keep this a secret to ourselves. Pour me another. That's classified. And finally, a sips five. Oh my, I was unaware anything could be this good. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I don't I know, understand it's that. It's a sound that none of you have ever heard. So I, I heard it on the movie. I wasn't quite sure what she was going on about. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, don't worry. When you go home, your wife will explain it to you. Or she won't. <laughs> <laughs> now she's explaining it to the pool man as we speak. Oh, uh, <laughs> and you don't even have a pool. That's the funny thing. I don't know what you pay the guy for, but she seems really happy after he's there. Um, we <laughs> thank you, Maury. Let's get oh, right uh, into it with a, with a hammer. Just beat that horse. <laughs> Brent is going to introduce our first product of the day. Okay, our, uh, our first product is the flagship of the distillery. It's the Buffalo Trace Bourbon. This is the one that you see when you walk into the you look on the shelves, and it's got the uh, the nice buffalo on the front. It's a lot of shows shows their history. I mean, this is. Uh, uh, it's won a few medals recently, the uh, 2016 double gold, the 2015 gold at the uh, San Francisco World Spears competition. Uh, this bourbon's at uh, 45% or uh, 90, 90 proof. I, I, I don't know if calling it the flagship is right. Isn't the flagship like the the, the thing that's like the, the epitome, the, 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 the highest mark? This is like their workhorse to me. Yeah, it's their, it's their, it's their, it's their main name brand, so... Yeah. You want to get into semantics? What we you, can call it their name. I haven't been bourbon. drinking enough. I can still do this. <laughs> the namesake. Yeah. For the uh, for tasting notes on this, what we have is it's, it's, it's a nice. It's got a nice color. It's a nice deep amber whiskey and has a complex aroma: vanilla, mint, and molasses. It's uh, pleasantly sweet to the taste, with uh, notes of brown sugar and spice, and that give way to oak, toffee, dark fruit, and anise. Uh, I really didn't get that last one until you. At the end of your uh, tasting, and you take a little breath in, I was told, and I and I finally got it. Yeah. Just, the the anise is, is subtle, but it's there. You wait yeah, till the finish. It is, it is there. I didn't. I mean, I didn't pick it up until until you were telling me about that about breathing in. You know, after afterwards. But this is uh, it finishes long and smooth, and it's got some serious depth. This is this is you know their their workhorse, their flagship product. It's it's good. There's the notes. The tasting notes are, are pretty much dead on. It's a nice everyday bourbon, something you can get to every single day, um, and you know I give it a solid three. Interesting. All right, Brent. Maury, what did you think of Buffalo Trace? I think it's a very nice bourbon. It's uh, extremely well made. It's well balanced. It's just really a very very uh, typical bourbon. Again, it's a wonderful everyday drink. And uh, I think that for the money, uh, it's hard to beat. We're all in the era of chasing super premium bourbons and esoteric bourbons and rare bourbons and the best bourbons. And some of those, as you know, we pay a very high premium for. But as far as something you could drink on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, uh, I think you can't beat Buffalo Trace. And I think taking into consideration the price and the value, I would give it a solid four rating. All right. That's classified. Army, what did you think about it? Um, I loved whoever wrote these tasting notes. I think they did a great job. And if I hadn't read about the anise, I wouldn't have tried picking up on it. And um, the vanilla and mint and the molasses, all there, I got them right away. The oak is beautiful, the toffee. But letting it sit on your tongue and then taking a deep breath afterwards or a shallow breath, the spice comes through and it's definitely anise. It was really interesting and... uh, Adding water to it, which I always do, uh, I got more of the herbal components, had a nice long finish, and I was really surprised by this because I haven't had it in so long because, as Maury said, I chased those other bourbons. So rather than drinking something you know, in the $20, $25 range, I haven't been doing that lately. And now I, I was going to give it a three, but uh, after listening to Maury, I, I really I go with him. I would say give it a four because this is a value, and it's really great quality. That's classified. Well, it's funny when you say chasing the ones that you can't get because quite a few of the ones that you chase that you can't get are also on the made, table today. <laughs> are also are also made by the folks at Buffalo Trace. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they 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 definitely uh, they you know they definitely have got quite a few heavy hitters in the portfolio. Um, 
for me. Heck, even the regular Buffalo Trace, sometimes when I order it, mm. I can't even get, oh, we can only give you the 1.75 liter. We're out of 750s. You know, it, it's there's shortage of this in South Florida, too. And so, this is their, so you're telling me getting a larger bottle is, is a bad thing? It's some people don't want to spend. Brent, explain this to me. This is not up to me. I fail to see that logic. Well, there are. I wish they sold bourbon in a five-gallon bucket, but that's you know that's just me. So, but there are some people that think that a larger bottle implies lower quality, and good stuff comes in small packages. That's yeah. what I keep telling people. Yeah. <laughs> think about jug wine. Yeah. <laughs> How many jug wines would you prefer? <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to our next one. Uh, Harvey, oh, you, no, you didn't give your rating, Bob. Oh, I, I give mine. I, I, I give it a good solid three. Interesting. And we'll have Harmy introduce our next whiskey. Okay, the next whiskey is the uh, Sazerac Rye. Sazerac Rye is a 2016 gold medal winner and a 2015 double gold medal at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. A double gold means that's a unanimous decision by the panel. Forty-five uh, percent ABV for y'all means uh, ninety proof. And this used to be a six-year-old product, but it's now a no-age statement product, looks like that. Um, or is it really? Do they, do they say anything about the age on this? I don't, I don't believe so. Yeah. And I'm not sure about the mash bill, but the rye is really prominent here. Um, I would go as, to say it's probably 60 to 70 percent or maybe even more rye. Um, it's got great aromas of clove, vanilla, anise, and pepper. Subtle notes of candied spice and citrus. Uh, the finish is big with hints of licorice. Um, I got black licorice on that finish, by the way. Uh, I didn't taste the citrus as much until I came back from my second round of tasting this. And let me say, the more you practice sipping and tasting on things, the better, you know? So That's pretty much, uh, you yeah, should that's pretty that. much how I, you know... Yeah run my life yeah, so. just come back and taste it again it was really great and the, the spice I got particularly in this one was ginger I think it's an impressive mixer it's not something I would drink by itself uh, but I gave it a three alright interesting well Maury what would you think of it I like the Sazerac rye I think for a rye it's a very nice uh, whiskey it's got a solid backbone I do agree with Harmeet that it, may, it would make an excellent cocktail and uh, as for a rye-based cocktail, the, I don't think you could go wrong with the Sazerac yeah, rye. The, the, the eponymous drink itself, this is it. That's it. And I think there's a reason why perhaps the, the whiskey or the cocktail were, uh, share a name in that uh, that little hint of licorice really does uh, does make a nice cocktail. Do, do you use uh, absinthe or do you use herb saint for your Sazeracs? I use absinthe. Bombing fluid. Mm. Yes. There you go. Yeah, well. So what's your rating? Uh, I would rate it a solid three. Interesting. Brent, what'd you think? Well, they call this one the baby Saz, but there's nothing really baby about it. It's got a really bold, peppery, and black licorice uh, flavor to it, which which I really like. And so I I tend to think it's got a higher rye a higher rye content than a than know, sixty or seventy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's probably you know over eighty percent. Okay, is what I'm thinking. You know, just because I get that that. That pepper, spice. yeah, that's that that you know the right the spice to it, the pepper and the black licorice to it. So, it's, it's it's definitely nothing baby about it. It's really good, but I'm gonna give it a solid three. Yeah, all right. And and the reason he's calling it a, a baby whiskey is because like a lot of people may have heard of the Sazerac eighteen year old seventeen. So, 17? seventeen. There yeah. was a Sazerac eighteen, no? No, seventeen. It was the the Buffalo Trace Antique Collections uh, Sazerac seventeen. I could have sworn I used to sell an 18-year-old before the antique collection stuff. Mm-hmm. I've been in the business for 30 years, man. I got one in the other room. <laughs> oh, why is it not on this table, Bob? <laughs> I don't like you that much. So, <laughs> you know, give me a break. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Bob. What's your rating on that? Uh, the Sazerac rye, definitely, the, you know, the vanilla and the clove. It's It's got a nice pepper to it. It's got that... that that distinctive uh, rye nose, um, a good solid rye. Picked up hints of uh, orange, a little bit of nutmeg to it. Um, you know, a good solid product, and I gave it a three. Interesting. All right. Well, we're going to go to Maury and have him introduce our next product. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Bob. The next thing we'll be uh, tasting and discussing will be the Eagle Rare Bourbon, also from the Buffalo Trace. Uh, company. Don't uh, mind if I do. 
This bourbon uh, received a uh, gold. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Okay. Uh, 2015 gold medal in the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. It clocks in at a 10-year age statement, which, interestingly enough, is moved to the back of the label, suggesting that perhaps, as Harmeet brought up earlier, it uh, maybe that maybe they all they're in the process of deleting that age statement. Yeah, I brought that up off the air. They didn't, they don't know about that. We were we were concerned when that 10-year-old moved to the back. Uh, in any event, uh, it is uh, 45% ABV, and interestingly enough, it was formerly a single barrel product. It is now no longer a single barrel product as they are unable to keep up with the demand. Uh, in terms of tasting notes, it's got a very complex nose. The nose is big and bold and forward, uh, has aromas of toffee, hints of orange peel, herbs, honey, leather, and oak. On the palate, the taste is bold and dry, delicate, with notes of candied almonds and very rich cocoa. The finish is dry and lingering. Basically, this bourbon, I think, is extremely well made. It's got a tremendous amount of finesse, style, and balance. Uh, It's really a, a special occasion bourbon at nearly an everyday price. Uh, I just think it's got all the wonderful characteristics that we love about bourbon and uh, really has been made very, very nicely with, uh, again, finesse and style. I would give this a Sips rating of a four. That's classified. All right. Brent, what did you think of it? Well, the first thing I noticed right off the bat was I got a strong nose. And so I'm thinking when I have that, that I'm going to get an overpowering uh taste on the palate and and I don't get that. What I do get is I get a nice smooth taste, which I'm not expecting. I'm expecting something to be bolder. But it's a, a very, very pleasant surprise when it's because everything is, is smoothed out. It's a it's an even it's an even tasting. There's not one thing that overpowers another once you're once you're tasting it, the, the tasting notes are uh, you know are dead on with it. But you know I, I like the toffee. I get a little bit of vanilla in, with it as well. And you know I'm gonna give this a solid three. Interesting. Harmy, what'd you think? I take issue with Brent's um, review. I, I agree with the big bold nose on this, but three is an insult, Brent. We will meet outside the duel. <laughs> um, no, I don't take it personally. But I, I, I opened a, a 1.75 liter for my wedding. This was one of the, the two bourbons that we had at the special bar at the wedding for the people who knew. Is that what it took to get her to go through? through with it um no actually she was into the scotch mm-hmm. i i got her to move from the alabama whole bourbon thing all i know is scotch, in order to get her yeah. to go through with it it involved a lot of liquor there right. was it's yeah a, i uh and likely a shotgun <laughs> that's that's why the pictures from the wedding are all embarrassing yeah <laughs> but uh 1.75 liter of the back back in the day was a single barrel uh 10 year old single barrel and it uh, i i have to give it a five i give it a five it's a fantastic oh my whiskey. goodness yeah. And it, it's, I'm not doing this just for nostalgia shake. I, I, I agree the nose is huge, but I, I appreciate the delicacy and the balance and finesse of this palate. It is very delicate. That's what's that's what's surprising. That it's like wedding. off-putting to you because yeah. you were expect you thought it promised more. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it did promise the nose. I thought promised more, but I was no. I, and it wasn't that. It but didn't it's also it's, this more. isn't the first whiskey you tasted today. You've been drinking other stuff. No, it wasn't, that, come it, back it to wasn't it that it promised more than it wasn't. But it was it was. It was very nice. It was very smooth. It was very delicate, and it just didn't. the The flavors didn't match the nose. Was the only thing that I was trying to refer to. Mm-hmm. I, again, I, I disagree. It's a five, man. Well, we'll talk outside, Brian. Right. We'll nice talk outside. Nice in the parking lot later. Yeah. Um, on my notes, um, absolutely. I, I pick up the toffee. I pick up the orange peel. Um, I pick up old soft used leather um i pick up the slight hint of oak not not soft corinthian leather rich corinthian leather yes like the kind that khan was wearing yes (laughs) (laughs) um yeah there's there's a there's a deep cocoa note to it and 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 again i i also agree the nose is absolutely lovely and it is surprising that it, when when you get the nose, it is so big. It's surprising that the whiskey is so finessed. 
you with a nose that large you're usually expecting something like a brick to the teeth and this is the exact opposite it's it's absolutely lovely um very subtle flavor um you know rarely do you get a nose of that stature with a whiskey that is that is this uh nuanced um and i gave it a good solid four that's classified all right, well, we're going to go on to our next expression, and we're going to have Brent introduce that one for us. Okay, this next one we have is the from the folks at Buffalo Trace is the Stag Junior. Uh, they don't call that a baby stag. They just call it a Stag Junior instead of uh, this, but it's uh, 66.05 or 132.1 proof. Yeah, that's 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 junior. That's a heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. That's yeah, not yeah. a baby. It's a little right. Baby. Yeah, this is baby. <laughs> it's a Big big baby, yes. This is uh, this is unfiltered. Um, it's won a couple of awards. It's uh, the 2016 uh, silver medal and the 2015 double gold, both at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Um, we have the, some of the tasting notes that we got on this are the rich, sweet, chocolate, and brown sugar flavors. They uh, mingle in a perfect balance for uh, the bold rye spiciness. It's got a boundless finish, lingers with uh, hints of cherries, cloves, and smokiness. So the the one thing I want to say here before we go to break, though, is this is unlike the unlike the Eagle Rare. This one has a much lighter nose to me. When you know where that one is overpowering, this one I think is for a nose. It's very much. Underwhelming. Yeah, it's the opposite. opposite. It's got a lighter nose and it's a much more bold. <laughs> exactly. So, much lighter Not nose to it. We'll come back to it in a minute. But, baby, the whole elation riding down this lover's avenue. As slow as a willow blows, or as fast as the whirlwind grows, we glide to me. Stars in cobalt blue Look to the left To the right Keep your eyes on the road My darling Wondering if we're only Passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever Sweet love Our eyes ahead Hey, and we're back with Sip, Suds, and Smokes. We were talking to Made Man Brent, and he was giving us his initial impressions of Stag Jr. from the Buffalo Trace Distillery, which is the subject of our episode today. Take it away, Brent. Yeah, as I was mentioning, the uh, the nose on this one compared to the Eagle Rare, I thought it was it was it was a lot lighter to me. And but once I once I put this in and tasted it. It smacked me up hard with the uh, with the heat. This is got, that. This is the brick to the teeth he was talking about. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you get that. You know, I got the heat with a uh, what I call a, a peppered cherry, yep. and yeah, just uh, but not a cherry pepper. That's a totally different cherry, thing. Different, different thing. Yes, a peppered cherry. Oh, well, anything with the name stag in it is going to be at least a, a mild brick to the teeth. So yeah. So you know. So while it's the 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 nose was underwhelming to me on this but the flavor was overpowering now one thing I, a lot of people have done you know is they add a couple drops of water to spread it out and stuff i was did things a little bit differently i added a few drops of the uh of the the their flagship bourbon the buffalo trace and to me that gave it a whole new flavor profile and i'm gonna you know, drop my semantics bit. argument with you about flagship but i want to do what you're doing man you're like your own little master distiller over here or blender over here mm. <laughs> I well, try yeah, that. But you could do the you richard could, patterson of kentucky yeah. yeah but you could add water to it and it gives it a different flavor profile but adding i think a couple drops of 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 a little bit lighter bourbon will do the same kind of thing and I think that gives you a different profile as well. I know he, a lot of different people. He dilutes people. his bourbon with bourbon. I, I really have it's a fundamental a, issue with I have that a, practice. I, 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 I <laughs> failed to see an argument He is a professional. Dilutes. Don't try this at home, kids, yeah. unless you really you know, but, have some experience. But there is there are people out there that are doing this, especially with the stag, because it is such a, it is such a high proof that 
you know, you want you need to bring it down a little bit, you know, for most people to be to be able to drink it straight. So now we're all going around the table doing yeah. what Bob uh, Brent was doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're going to do we're going to do his little following experiment. the advice. So. <laughs> Everybody's eating bourbon with bourbon. There's My nothing, advice to you: start drinking heavily. Yeah, that works. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with bourbon and bourbon, but um, but this one very pleasant. I give this one a uh, a definite Take solid it. four. This is a nice... That's classified. All right. Maury, what did you think? Well, this is definitely a big bourbon, and it's in sharp contrast to the um, Eagle Rare. There's nothing subtle about the stag. There's nothing junior about the stag. There's nothing baby about the stag. It is a big, bold, in-your-face whiskey. It's hot. Uh, I do think it benefits from just a little bit of water. Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we, we've been going around the table doing more. <laughs> um, I think that uh, it definitely needs a little bit of water to open it up, and even then it's still a little bit hot on the palate. But it is definitely, and not for the faint of heart, it's a full-flavored whiskey. It's got uh, a tremendous backbone. I think you can uh, really spice up a cocktail with it. I think you can drink it neat. Um, I think it's really a, a, an extremely well-made product. Uh, I would give it a solid four rating. That's classified. All right. Harm, what do you think? Uh, I think this is another one where the tasting note's pretty good. Uh, but they say it has hints of cherry. Ah, uh, no. For me, right up front, it was like I got the ketones right away. It was big cherry. Yeah, huge. With the chalk. Huge, huge cherry. Huge, thick, black cherry is yeah. what I got on the back yeah. end. And they also mentioned some smokiness, but I'm used to drinking scotch. The smokiness that you get in bourbon is nothing compared to that, so I didn't get any of that. Yeah, well, it's a difference between smoky and peaty. Yeah, you know, and you're that's, right. And that's, you know, I mean, when, you know, people that are scotch people, when they think smoke, they're thinking peat. They're thinking iodine mud and, and iodine and use Band-Aids and Mercurochrome. You know, they're, they're thinking of that. They're, you know, they're not thinking strictly smoke. This is more, you know, smoke out of a smoker or a fireplace or something. And I, I, and I think I do this take is a bit of that looking out. at that color. That's a number five char on that barrel. That's well, a that's big alligator. Dark, barrel. dark color. Yeah. I mean, that's that's so, dark. Well, actually, that was the first thing that struck me about this whiskey. As soon as I put it hit the glass, the color is amazing. Yeah. The nose was overpowering with the cherries and the clove and the and the brown sugar. Adding a little bit of cold water to it brought out like barbecue. I wanted barbecue right there. Um, I want barbecue right now. Yeah, That's pretty much go. every day of my life. I can't believe I, we don't have barbecue here. I'm just yeah. saying, as uh, since you're hosting us... You talk to the boss here. Something's yeah. going wrong. So, uh, even with the, adding the water, and now after the second time around now, thanks to uh, uh, Brent's suggestion, adding some Buffalo Trace, it's still a little too hot. So, And I, I have to admit, I'm not the man for this whiskey. I can't, I'm not man enough for this whiskey, boys. Not man enough. So I only gave it a four. Classified. Never happy, are you? Well, that was really horrible. No, oh, you always complaining. <laughs> no. Um, you know, it's it it it's named Stag for a reason, and it's named Junior for a reason. It it's it's certainly not the George T. Stag, which, as oh, you know, lovely is, whiskey is my absolute favorite whiskey. I, I you know I I'd bathe in it if I could buy it in quantities large enough. Um, but it it does it good solid justice. The the color is is absolutely beautiful. Um, the nose on it um, it is a little bit lighter than you would expect with a whiskey this big, uh, but it doesn't really disappoint. Um, the flavor is pure stag brick to the teeth. Um, the cherries were the thing that really leaped out to me, especially on the back end uh, with just a drop of water. The cherries seemed to even come forward a lot more. Um, brown sugar, molasses, um, you know, serious vanilla notes. I mean, just overall, you know, a really good, solid, solid whiskey. And I give it a four. That's classified. Nice stuff. All right. Well, we're coming up to uh, the E.H. Taylor single barrel. Um, and we, in the history, we told you about Colonel Taylor, the E.H. Taylor Jr. single barrel. Uh, named in his honor, is aged exclusively in Warehouse C at Buffalo Trace. Um, that's also the Built place. by Taylor. 
built by Taylor uh, back in 1881. Um, it's the same one where they had the. Uh, I, I was in Kentucky when the uh, the E. H. Taylor Tornado Survivor bourbon that they had when the tornado came and tore the roof yeah, off. Yeah, tore the roof off. Um, I was actually up there that weekend at another event watching on TV, and they were flying overhead with helicopters, and you could see, you know, it ripped the roof off and knocked a piece of the wall off, but. You know that the the ricks, those things are made out of some pretty solid timbers. It didn't move a single barrel. <laughs> they, they were all just sitting there. You know, brick may give way, roofs may give way, but that much weight isn't going to move. Um, it's a single barrel product, so the uh, uh, it's a single barrel product, but the uh, it's bottled in uh, hundred proof because it's uh, bottled in bond. Um, the aroma carries lightly, uh, toasted oak. It's got a great mouth feel. It's got a nice viscosity to it, very mouth coating. Um, I'm getting a little bit of fig. I'm getting a little bit of plum. I'm getting a little bit of butterscotch. Um, very well balanced. Uh, tobacco, old leather, um, dark spices, nutmeg um, on, on the tip of the tongue. Um, it's got a nice finish to it. Um, just overall a good solid whiskey I'll give it a four that's classified Harmie what would you think about it well um, for me what really hit me over the head with this whiskey I agree with you with the toasted oak and the figs I didn't get the plum so much I was butterscotch a lot of butterscotch yeah, there was some sweet tobacco huge. the butterscotch was a little bit too big for me uh, the finish is long sissy I like that's, it's, look, butterscotch to me made it taste too much like candy I'd rather drink the stag I love my candy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't need to hear about your mistress. <laughs> Who doesn't she like is, candy? She is named yeah. Butterscotch. Oh, nice. But uh, this was a little too sweet for me. I'm always complaining, I know. I was. T- I, I gave it a three. I, I think, well, I think, I think uh, your problem is you drank the stag first. Yeah, yeah there you go. I think it's a tough act to follow the stag. Had you tried the... Um, Taylor first. Taylor first. Yeah. You might have had a different opinion, yeah, but I agree. It takes you down a little bit. I, I think Brent's had enough stag. So fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life. So that's yeah. Thank Army. you, being warmer. Oh, um, <laughs> he, he said Brent then played the soundtrack. Oh, <laughs> I didn't get fat till later. Drunk and stupid through. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. If, it, if the name fits, all right. So you know, quit, quit worrying about everything. Mm. Maury, what do you think? I really like the H. Taylor. I think it's a wonderful bourbon. I think it drinks like an 80 proof. It does not taste hot. I think it's, again, uh, well balanced. There's lots of toffee. There's a little bit of butterscotch. I don't think the butterscotch was overwhelming. I did get a little bit of fig. And uh, it does have some some sort of darker spices on the finish. You guys are going to make me drink more. I have to taste it again now. You have to taste it again. Thank you, sir. I think it's a beautifully made whiskey, and I think the uh, Bottle and Bond asserts its quality, and uh, again, super well made. I give it a solid four. All right. It's another four. That's classified. Brent, what do you think? Okay, this is uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. That's what I thought. This was this one has that medium nose. No, the Eagle Rare had the so strong nose. So she's breaking and entering. This yeah, is this what this is all exactly. about? Exactly. The, the the Eagle Rare had the uh, the strong nose. The Stag had the lighter nose. This one's right in the middle. The Eagle Rare was more smoothed out and mellow. The Stag was hot. This one's right in the middle. This one is like the the to me the best balance, and it throws everything together without it doesn't have the heat. That the stag has, and it's and only a hundred proof, which is well, I understand. For some that. people, is is too much, but th- I, well, I, that's I, what no Maury said was perfect. This right. this exactly, great. exactly. That's why I said this is like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You know, it's the three bourbons, and this is the one that that comes out in the middle. And I uh, I enjoyed it the mo- out of the most out of these, and it's uh, uh it's, I give it a solid four. That's classified. No fives for you at this table, Bob. A uh, Brent. Yeah. Well, Sorry, you sure. white guys all look alike to me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you something. But I could not make it through the whole episode without doing this damn ap- a- accent. But I'm not going to bobble my head today. Not once. <laughs> I was missing that accent. Thank God you're here. <laughs> we were missing Apu. How are you, Apu? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I get the Goldilocks and the Three Bears thing. I just, I really, that Eagle Rare to me was the five. And uh, no fives on the table for you, Brent. No, not, not here. I 
for me, for a five, I, I have a different palate than some of this. And I really want that strong, the strong vanilla, that strong toffee. You want the regular the, stag, which I he's got the, in the yeah. bar, which we need to be rating right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. So when we, uh, hit the when, regular when, stag. We, when we close up the mics, that's where we're going to rate next. So yeah. it's, Bob is looking at us. He's yeah, giving like, us 30 like, looks. Yeah, he's like, you're going to go where and get what? <laughs> Well, no, I'm 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 with Brent. Uh, you know, rarely does something hit a five with me. I sort of reserve that for something that is just over and above the average that yeah. you're going to get. I mean, to to hit a five with me, it's it's got to be pretty damn stellar. So, um, you know, with with the ratings that we've got, you know, on all the products here, you know, it, 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 as high as I've rated, you know, the ones that I have, that just tells you the quality. There's nothing bad here. No, no. right. A four is nothing to sneeze at, and no. I agree. There's really not a bad whiskey on the table. I mean, hey, it's the same guys who make the antique series are the same guys who are making Pappy Van Winkle that is, you know, the unobtainian of the bourbon world at this point. So, you know, they, they obviously, Harlan Wheatley is an extremely gifted master distiller. Um, they really know what they're doing at, at this place. Um, you know, it's... There's does, a, does Wheatley make a weeded mash? Well, yeah. Which one? Pappy. W. L. Weller and the Weller. Yeah. The what am I line? thinking? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. the Pappy line I don't even yeah. think about anymore. But well, the Weller, antique, we need more yeah. Weller. Yeah, the antique, all of it. Well, it 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 it's it's around if you you know if you look hard enough. Some states you know get a reasonable allocation on the Weller, and some states get none at all. Fortunately, we do get some down here in in Florida. So I always keep a bottle or twelve handy, or maybe sixteen or more um, we'll help we'll help you with that yeah well <laughs> i'm sure you will um yeah they you know there are some distilleries you know there there are some distilleries that just you know their particular flavor profile just you know will agree with you and and this is one of the ones that has always agreed with me i mean they they literally don't make anything that i don't like i mean i may like i may like some more than others um, that they make, but pretty much everything that 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 comes out of this distillery, you know, hits hits most of the cylinders for me. There's nothing bad. There's no. nothing bad. I mean, there are no, no weak no, spots. There's, there's no, no right. There's none of this. There's none of these things that are you know. You see some of these up and coming distilleries, and they have two year, four year bourbon, or or something like that, or some of these other distilleries that have a too many a low, two and three years a, out there. Yeah, low end product. These guys they have are low end sure. product. These guys just don't have that. These yeah, guys have mature and more mature, yeah. and aged and more aged and well aged. There's mm-hmm. nothing that's been released too young, yeah. too early. I'm thinking there's a couple things that are released too late. I'm not going to name names, but there are things that go over the hill. There's too much. Over well, there. there is such a thing as too late, and there's that's the whole debate about age statements and people buying for years and ages as opposed to buying for taste. But the bigger sin is releasing stuff too early, and it's just not quite ready. I, I understand what you're saying is a, def- a bigger sin, but because you can blend back, like you can do what you can do what Brent just did. You buy your whiskey that's probably just had a little bit too much age on it. Blend it back with something younger yourself in your own house, in your own glass. Yeah, do your own thing. Fix that whiskey. There's a whole. But it's deal. hard to fix a whiskey that's too young. And I understand where the distillers are coming from. You know, they have to make their money back. They're putting this stuff in barrels for years. They're not making a penny until right, they sell until, something. Until they sell it to somebody, right. So they have to do something. Yeah, but uh, sometimes they inflict us with stuff they shouldn't be inflicting us with. Uh, it happens. <laughs> happens. Are, are you naming names? Or? <laughs> I think we named names on a previous episode. Yeah, it happens, uh, it happens more more often than not with uh, upcoming distilleries. Is, and you can't blame them. They want to... They need to try to get money back to try to... To keep going. To, to keep, keep going. aging. Yeah. Exactly. They want to keep living. Yeah. They well, they to... don't have 140 years worth of distilling experience and inventory on which to fall back on. And, a dozen, and a dozen names of experience. Yeah. You know, that, which yeah. is... They're, they're, they're working from scratch and they're... you know. They're there's there's to... a lot of young whiskeys out there that are being released too young, but you know what? There's some that have so much potential. I can't wait to taste them in a couple more years. Uh, there's some that oh, have been released that, so. that, that were young that you know you tasted and were young, but they were exciting. That's all the time we have today. Uh, mm-hmm. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and you can catch all of our episodes online as well on SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, YouTube, PRX, and Spreaker. Our native media host iTunes and our Android app are always the easiest ways to enjoy the show on your phone. Just search for Sip Sud Smokes on iTunes or in the Google Play Store. Uh, we'd love your feedback. You can reach us online at info at sipsudsmokes.com. Except our, about my accent. I don't want to hear about my accent. 
<laughs> our daily tasty notes fly out every day on Twitter at Sips, Subs, and Smokes. And our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of reviews. Do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. That's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. I want to thank our co-host for joining us today. Thank you, Main Man Brent. Uh, thanks. Thank you for letting me out of the basement. That's what I really appreciate. His parents just, raised him in a basement. <laughs> Thank you, Made Man Maury. Thank you, Bob. It's been a pleasure being here, even if we do have to put up with the Indian accent. Um, and most especially, thank you for that uh, wonderful dessert, the uh, George T. Stag. Oh, God. it's Yeah, it's my death row bourbon. And, <laughs> and, Is there something you want to tell us about? <laughs> Uh, nothing that is, uh, yeah, no, not no, Nothing you can here. prove. Um, thank, thank you, thank you to good old boy Harmy. Thank you guys for having me again. Thank you for letting me live another day and to enjoy the George T. Stag. And Maury, I'll be expecting a prescription from a medicinal bourbon. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Cheers. All right. This is uh, Made Man Bob, and we want to thank you again for joining us. And remember, life is too short to drink cheap whiskey. To drink cheap whiskey? <laughs> slur, cheap, cheap, drink, cheap drink whiskey. Slur that one again, Bob. <laughs> to drink cheap whiskey. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to speaking to you again. This has been a One Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.